everyone it's Chris again and today is an awesome day I'm on my trip up to uh, just outside Charlotte North Carolina I have 943 miles in the odometer and on this trip from South Georgia I'll obviously be crossing over the thousand mile mark on the odometer this is kind of a big deal for me at least it's my it's my second new car I had a brand new 2015 EcoBoost back in the day um, I blew it up maybe sometime I'll share that story uh, but the Dark Horse was the first car I've ever ordered and took delivery of obviously uh, it got it brand new and it's kind of a big deal uh, to cross over that thousand mile mark and I wanted to share some of my thoughts of uh, my first thousand miles on this car I know there are a couple other reviews out there in terms of uh, what people's thoughts are um, just to give you a little bit more background about me uh, this is my eighth Mustang. Um, I, I, my first car was a 2006 V6. After that, I had an 04 GT, an 11 GT, uh, then the 15 EcoBoost, and then a 15 GT, and then an 18 GT. Uh, and then most recently before this, I had the 2018 GT350, and now the Dark Horse. Um, so I've had a wide variety of Mustangs. I'm obviously a Mustang guy at heart. I love anything with four wheels as long as you can drive it fast, but at the end of the day, uh, I bleed Ford blue. So um, after having all of those different Mustangs, multiple different generations, I wanted to share my thoughts on essentially how the Dark Horse feels, um, how the Dark Horse looks, how the Dark Horse performs. Um, I recently did a video on uh, the infotainment system, just kind of giving you guys an overview as well as uh, how the car performed at an autocross in comparison to the 350 and my experience with the Mach 1. Um, but all in all, um, I, uh, I just wanted to share, you know, generally how is the car to live in and uh, how is the car to drive over long distances and not just the performance side of it. So um, first things first, uh, I want to talk about the exterior of the car. Um, I had a really, really good conversation uh, with uh, the lead exterior designer, Chris Walter, um, uh, of, the, of the S650 Mustang, and he's, he is an enthusiast at heart, and he has the biggest heart, pun intended, I guess, saying heart back to back, but he, does, he has such a big heart for the enthusiast community behind Mustang and capturing the essence of what, what this car is supposed to be. Um, because it's, it's not just a new car. It's not just like, oh, hey, we're rolling out a new Accord or a new Camry. This is a car with heritage. 2024 is the 60th anniversary. Talk about the kind of pressure that the design team and every other team was going through in developing the S650, knowing that this is the seventh generation of a car that is iconic, not only to us enthusiasts in the United States, but all over the world. Uh, that running pony has become uh, an icon known by many, a brand known by many. So uh, there's a lot of pressure there. And we all know the underpinnings of the car are very similar to the S550, but in terms of the exterior design, uh, it's tough to do a refresh of an entire body, but carry over the same, the, a similar chassis, the same chassis more or less, uh, with some very specific and uh, meaningful updates. But uh, I really, really do like the overall look of this car. Um, I gotta say two things that really stand out to me um, on this car. The first one is probably <laughs> my favorite. And I don't think pictures capture it that well, or even video. So um, go out, find a 2024 and look at it for yourself and get, you know, obviously get your own opinion. But my favorite part of this car is the rear quarter from from the side uh, how the designers chiseled in that hard angle of the taillights um, and hard angle of the quarter panel and kind of made the car look like it's look like it's moving sitting still that is something that you know uh, the general shape of the car has obviously been around for decades but uh, that is something that is new to for S650 and something that re a design um, a design uh, cue of the 2024s that is unique and something I really really like, especially after seeing it in person. Um, I added the anchor room light tint uh, to the rear tail lights to give it a little bit more of a dark blacked out look, um, and I think it only uh, 
kind of makes it look even more sinister. Uh, the second thing that I really, really do like um, in terms of the exterior would be uh, the spoiler options. I will say I really like the aggressiveness of the Dark Horse Handling Pack spoiler with that gurney flap. Uh, but even the GT Performance Package spoiler looks really, really cool. Um, but more notably, uh, the front headlights. Um, I really like that Ford took the Night Pony package or Black Appearance package. Uh, I think they're calling it the Night Pony package now. Um, oh, that sounds good. Uh, but how they took the Black Appearance package and the Night Pony package and incorporated different headlights into uh, into that package. So obviously Ford took some design cues from those companies like Anchor Room where people were blacking out the, uh, the orange reflectors or putting tint over their headlights altogether or the GTS uh, headlight and taillight covers. Um, th modifications out there that we all know Ford's looking at and taking notes for the next generation or refreshes with the night pony package and having the the headlights blacked out with that specific package removes the modification you have to do um, it looks really really good and the best part is and i'm a stickler for this you don't lose any light output i do like the smoked look uh, but i don't want to lose any of that light output i'm a safety guy you know if i'm driving the car at night um, i'm not super good at looking for deer so I don't want to reduce my light output any more than I have to, right? Uh, so having those blacked out housings from the factory is an awesome addition. Now for the interior. There's a lot of love and a lot of hate when it comes to the interior of the S650. And at the end of the day, I'll be the first to tell you that there's hate when every generation comes out. All I ask is that you take a minute and go see one in person and I promise it will grow on you. It may, not, it may not be your favorite, but the car does grow on you the more you spend time with it. And I will tell you right now, the interior, it's, it's a step up. Obviously, I'm 31 years old, I am a millennial. Um, I do like the graphics, I do like technology, I do like all the things that Ford looked into, also the upcoming generation, Gen Zs, when they, when they were designing the interior and exterior and every part of this car. Uh, but the immersive experience you get with the Unreal graphics and the digital gauge cluster taken to the next level with the graphics of the car, you know, doing burnouts and stuff when you do drag, uh, drag strip mode and all of the different things that are happening and, and it's like you're playing a PlayStation, you know, in front of you. Um, and it's, it's super high quality, it's super responsive. Um, they're rolling out updates for the glitches that are happening. Um, I've only experienced a couple of them, but you know, it's something different. It's not the same. I love the analog, you know, the analog uh, feel too with the gauges and the traditional gauge cluster that say my GT350 had, right? My 18 GT had the digital gauge cluster, which was cool. And obviously this is cool too, but and I love the look of that, you know, 8,250 RPM and that tack just pinning as you bang the next gear, right? It's cool, but there's a lot of technology here. And for someone like me, who's literally about to do a six hour drive all the way up to Charlotte, North Carolina, um, having this immersive experience where I can literally, you know, tap this button and make Google Maps all the way across my dash here is pretty darn cool. Uh, Fox body mode, you know, taps into those Gen X's that uh, out there that, you know, had those Fox bodies in high school or their buddies had those Fox bodies. They remember doing stupid stuff, burnouts in parking lots and drag racing or whatever they were doing in their Fox bodies back in the day. It just brings it all back, right? And that is a nod to, you know, the designers and the guys and, and the people at Ford understanding that uh, there is a legacy here, there is a history here, and like I said, this car is an icon in every way possible. You know, my only caveat about the interior is uh, it was funny. Jason Camisa was he pointed it out in the, a recent Haggerty video. Um, it's very similar to the BMW interior. It is. 
Um, but, but, there's only so many ways you can lay this out, right? The screen going all the way across and, and having it at a certain viewing height, and I'm sure there's, um, you know, viewing angles that you need to have for safety standards. And uh, there's a lot of things that go into the design of a car, um, but I gotta say, despite that, um, it is a, it is a great cockpit to spend so much time in um, if you are you know the kind of person that takes your Mustang on long trips. If you're just a weekend warrior that takes it around the corner to Cars and Coffee or trailers it to the track and tracks the car and don't really spend much time in it, um, then it really doesn't matter. You know, if you're a track guy, you have the really cool gauges that are all live on a huge screen that you only had in the center screen before. Um, that's pretty cool, but to it's the best of all worlds. It has the performance benefits, which we'll get to, but um, in terms of the interior, it's comfortable. The only other car I can think of that's this comfortable would be the Mach 1, and that was the pinnacle of naturally aspirated S550. You know, this car is extremely comfortable. The Magna Ride does what it's supposed to, and uh, in normal mode, it is a cruiser. Uh, and I have 20 inch Velgens on this car, 20 by 10 in the front, 20 by 11 in the back. Uh, with a cushy, mind you, a cushy 315.35 in the rear. So that definitely does help a little bit with the ride quality. Um, it's already good, even with the, the super stiff and hard uh, Trofeo RSs um, when you are cruising down the highway. But, you know, you add a aftermarket wheel and tire setup with a little bit more sidewall, and it really does drive super smooth. So, um, I got to say interior exterior I'm trying to think if I have a complaint about the exterior I don't really think I do I think it captures the essence of of Mustang it has the silhouette um, you know the the sloped fastback with the the big haunched uh, you know wide hips in the rear I think the car even looks wider than it did uh, prior and uh, I know one thing that Chris mentioned, uh, Chris Walter, the exterior designer, mentioned when we were talking was that lower belt line um, actually does make the car look squattier from the side, which is an interesting, uh, interesting point. You really don't notice that until you notice it. And then once you do, you can't unsee it. Um, so pretty, pretty cool. Um, moving on, interior, exterior. Uh, let's talk about the performance. I did touch on this quite a bit, my video after autocross, but um, performance kind of ties into the chassis, right? Underneath the car, obviously a good chunk of it is the same or very similar to the outgoing S550. Um, this isn't a brand new platform. This isn't totally revolutionary, brand new body style, brand new everything like for example, when uh, you know we went from 2014 S197 solid rear axle to 2015 EcoBoost rolled out, the IRS rolled out, Gen 2 Coyote. Um, there was a bunch of there were a bunch of different changes, and and the Mustang went global at that point. It was a big deal. GT350 came out. There were a lot of different things that S550 brought. Um, I would say this is this car, and I don't know if I'm pulling from a review video I watched. I feel like. Maybe I've heard it or not. I'm not sure. Um, sorry if I'm stealing it from somebody else. But if this car feels like the S550 went to college. Um, the S550, especially in its earlier years, uh, just felt, especially getting out of this and getting into an early S550, it felt clunky. It felt unrefined. It felt way better than the solid rears did. And that's what 97s. But the, the evolution of Ford and this platform and the S550 and perfecting the IRS on a Mustang and a rear wheel drive, all that good stuff, it's good. But now that the S650 is out, now that they spent all this time perfecting and perfecting and perfecting and perfecting and learning from their mistakes and getting better and better and better, this car feels like underneath the S550 went to college. That's the best way I can put it. Um, it does everything really, really well. I have seat time uh, in an EcoBoost Premium. I have seat time in a, G a base GT. 
a GT uh, performance package as well as a dark horse uh, base and a dark horse handling pack. So I've been I've had the opportunity to drive uh, the full pretty much the full gamut of S650s, and I'll be the first to tell you that this car does everything better than the S550. Um, that is in terms of comfort and ride quality, that is in terms of straight line performance, stock for stock. We know the 10 speeds in the S650 are quicker. I've seen a lot of videos out there. I won't post any of them or, or, or put them as B-roll in this video because uh, it is some street racing, but you look at the videos, stock for stock, the new 24 GTs with the 10 speed base model are doing impressive things and plenty of companies out there that are really, really pushing them to the absolute limit with zero tuning. I think once this engine, once this car is unlocked in whatever way is required, whether it's pulling the, the PCM out and shipping it out to somebody or plugging in or plain old plugging in OBD2 and uploading a tune, this thing's gonna be a monster. And the Dark Horse is already built for boost. It's already built for boost. You have the forged connecting rods, unique camshafts and all the good stuff that makes it the 500 horsepower, but it's, it's ready to rock. Um, so the performance side of it does make me excited. Uh, again, the only car I could really compare to Dark Horse or even GT Premium. GT Premium had a lot of the hand-me-downs from um, the best of S550, like the Mach 1 and even some GT500 components. This car just does it really well. I'd say the Mach 1, the only thing I could say is it, it does feel a little bit more communicative um, when you're behind the wheel of it. Uh, but I got over that really quick in the Dark Horse when I went faster. <laughs> I mean, the body control and dynamics of the Magna Ride in this car are leaps and bounds better than, than what the Mach 1 had. Um, performance wise, obviously I had the GT350 before this. Um, at least in a stick car, it's definitely slower. It is than the 350. Uh, but I backed that up with, yeah, sure, the 350 was a little bit faster in a straight line. Straight line. Um, but it didn't vibrate itself apart, or this car doesn't vibrate itself apart. And then the, the Coyote, Gen 4 Coyote is tried and true. It's been around for 12, 14, 13 years now, so you can't go wrong. Um, aside from that, I'm really excited for this year because I'm gonna be able to uh, go to a few more Mustang events, get some more miles in this car. I'll be relocating up to the Charlotte, North Carolina area which means I'll have access to uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway and Z-Max. And actually, I'm really excited to go to the Ford Performance Racing School for the Dark Horse Track Attack uh, later this year. Um, there's a lot of cool things I do have planned for this car and, uh, and other S650s out there and other Mustangs out there. So if there is any, any kind of content that you guys want to see about this car, about any other Mustangs, um, anything that I could share in terms of my knowledge or experience that would help you make a better educated buying decision, you know, if you are looking at these cars or what parts to buy, things like that, please comment below and let me know. If you do want to stick around and see what's going on for 2024, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm just dipping my feet, dipping my toes in the water when it comes to YouTube, and so far it's been kind of fun, so I want to keep doing it, but uh, anyways, be sure to hit that like button, the subscribe, that notification bell, and uh, we'll see you next time.